Intraparenchymal hemorrhage is one extension of intracerebral hemorrhage, with bleeding within brain parenchyma. Intraparenchymal hemorrhage accounts for approximately 8 to 13 percent of all strokes and results from a wide spectrum of disorders. It is more likely to result in death or major disability than ischemic stroke or subarachnoid hemorrhage, and therefore constitutes an immediate medical emergency. Intracerebral hemorrhages and accompanying edema may disrupt or compress adjacent brain tissue, leading to neurological dysfunction. Substantial displacement of brain parenchyma may cause elevation of intracranial pressure and potentially fatal hair herniation syndromes. Pathophysiology Non-traumatic intraparenchymal hemorrhage most commonly results from hypertensive damage to blood vessel walls for example hypertension, eclampsia, drug abuse, but it also may be due to autoregulatory dysfunction with excessive cerebral blood flow for example reperfusion injury, hemorrhagic transformation, cold exposure, rupture of an aneurysm or arteriovenous malformation, arteriopathy, altered hemostasis, hemorrhagic necrosis venous outflow obstruction. Non-penetrating and penetrating cranial trauma can also be common causes of intracerebral hemorrhage. Physical symptoms, clinical manifestations of intraparenchymal hemorrhage are determined by the size and location of hemorrhage, but may include the following, hypertension, fever, or cardiac arrhythmias, natural rigidity, subeloid retinal hemorrhages, altered level of consciousness, anisocoria, nystagmus, Focal neurological deficits, putamen, contralateral hemiparesis, contralateral sensory loss, contralateral conjugate gaze paresis, homonymous hemianopsia, aphasia, neglect, or apraxia, thalamus, contralateral sensory loss, contralateral hemiparesis, gaze paresis, homonymous hemianopia, meiosis, aphasia, or confusion, lobar, contralateral hemiparesis or sensory loss. Contralateral conjugate gaze paresis, homonymous hemianopia, abulia, aphasia, neglect, or apraxia, chordate nucleus, contralateral hemiparesis, contralateral conjugate gaze paresis, or confusion, brainstem, tetraparesis. Facial weakness, decreased level of consciousness, gaze paresis, ocular bobbing, meiosis, or autonomic instability, cerebellum, ataxia, usually beginning in the trunk. Ipsilateral facial weakness, ipsilateral sensory loss, gaze paresis, skewed deviation, meiosis, or decreased level of consciousness. Causes, hypertension, arteriovenous malformation, aneurysm rupture, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, intracranial neoplasm, coagulopathy, hemorrhagic transformation of an ischemic infarct, cerebral venous thrombosis, sympathometic drug abuse, moire sickle cell disease, eclampsia or postpartum vasculopathy, infection, vasculitis, neonatal intraventricular hemorrhage, trauma. Diagnosis, computed tomography, a CT scan may be normal if it is done soon after the onset of symptoms. A CT scan is the best test to look for bleeding in or around your brain. In some hospitals, a perfusion CT scan may be done to see where the blood is flowing and not flowing in your brain. Magnetic resonance imaging, a special MRI technique may show evidence of an ischemic stroke within minutes of symptom onset. In some hospitals, a perfusion MRI scan may be done to see where the blood is flowing and not flowing in your brain. Angiogram, a test that looks at the blood vessels that feed the brain. An angiogram will show whether the blood vessel is blocked by a clot the blood vessel is narrowed, or if there is an abnormality of a blood vessel known as an aneurysm. Carotid duplex, a carotid duplex is an ultrasound study that assesses whether or not you have atherosclerosis of the carotid arteries. These arteries are the large blood vessels in your neck that feed your brain. Transcranial Doppler, transcranial Doppler is an ultrasound study that assesses whether or not you have atherosclerosis of the blood vessels inside of your brain. It can also be used to see if you have emboli in your blood vessels. Treatment Intracerebral hemorrhages is a severe condition requiring prompt medical attention. Treatment goals include life-saving interventions, supportive measures, and control of symptoms. Treatment depends on the location, extent, and cause of the bleeding. Often, 
treatment can reverse the damage that has been done. A craniotomy is sometimes done to remove blood, abnormal blood vessels, or a tumor. Medications may be used to reduce swelling, prevent seizures, lower blood pressure, and control pain. Acute intraparenchymal hemorrhage, clinical history, an 81-year-old diabetic male presents with a change in mental status. Findings Axial CT images through the brain demonstrate two areas of hyperdensity, one measuring approximately 2x 1.5 cm and a second measuring approximately 3x 4 cm. There is some surrounding edema with mass effect upon the left ventricle. In addition, there is extension into the ventricular system. Diagnosis, acute intraparenchymal hemorrhage. Discussion, there are many causes for intraparenchymal hemorrhage. A common cause is secondary to hypertension. These most commonly occur within the basal ganglia, subcortical white matter, cerebellum, thalamus and pons. Hemorrhage into the posterior fossa with mass effect or extension into the ventricular system carries poor prognosis. In younger patients, vascular malformations, specifically AVMs and cavernous angiomas are more common causes for hemorrhage. In addition, Venous malformations are associated with hemorrhage. In the elderly population, amyloid angiopathy is associated with cerebral infarcts as well as hemorrhage in superficial locations, rather than deep white matter or basal ganglia. These are usually described as lobar. These bleedings are not associated with systemic amyloidosis. Hemorrhagic neoplasms are more complex, heterogeneous bleeds often with associated edema. These hemorrhages are related to tumor necrosis, vascular invasion and neovascularity. Glioblastomas are the most common primary malignancies to hemorrhage while thyroid, renal cell carcinoma, melanoma, and lung cancer are the most common causes of hemorrhage from metastatic disease. Other causes of intraparenchymal hemorrhage include hemorrhagic transformation of infarction which is usually in a classic vascular distribution and is seen in approximately 24 to 48 hours following the ischemic event. This hemorrhage rarely extends into the ventricular system. Gallery